Welcome to the podcast. Hello. I'm here with Leo, uh, and I'm Phoenix, and you're listening to Phoenix Rain Podcast, episode probably number six. I don't I remember. remember. I might not upload that last one because it got <laughs> out of hand. <laughs> we don't know. Yeah. All right. So Leo and I went to school together. Mm. We went to high school and then college together. Mm. What are you doing in Melbourne? I am currently studying at Swinburne, doing Swinburne. film and television. Film and television. You must be getting close to the end of your degree now. I wish it was closer, but the, oh. <laughs> the, well, I guess like yeah, it, it's it's in fashion now to be complaining about the course, at least really? inside of the course, because yeah. everyone's kind of getting sick of it. But Dude, same thing happened with my course. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, half. Mm. I've got a year and a half left now. Wow, that's a really long time. Yeah, it's a How four, long is four year? Four year. Course. It's a four year degree. Is it a Bachelor of Arts, Film and Television? Yeah, well, it's, it's or a fine arts. Or it's something. it's it's just Bachelor of Film and Television. Right. They, they, but like, they the year that I did it, they changed it from a three year course to a four year course to put like a little honors at the end. Mm. And uh, so it is bachelors with honors. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Which um is. I mean, it's a little weird because the three years was all right for what they were doing and, and they didn't add anything new when they extended to four years. It was kind of like... Mm, they like, stretched it out a little just more. Just stretch it out and uh, get a little bit more money. Yeah. And then it backfired on them because there was some weird government funding stuff and now they just don't get any money at all. Ah, shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, Man, yeah. Philip Swinburne's going to be kicking himself right now. <laughs> I so, okay, so how much is your course in total in terms of money? So how how big know. is your debt? I, I honestly, I like that shit just goes to my parents. I'm lucky enough <laughs> to be in a position where I can just be like, yo, mum, uh... Hey, really? This, yeah. So your parents pay for your degree? Yeah. Wow. That's very. That's nice pretty rare. Yeah. Like most people I know do the hex debt. Yeah. Yeah. I well, so see, this is the fuck thing. Where like, if people are better off in in like financial situations, it's it's easy to then be more better off. Like you you can mm. r- like it's kind of exponential the amount of uh, money that you can get. Better my off parents, than this. yeah. So like, I can do the hex debt thing and there's interest that get, goes on those debts mm-hmm. um, but if you have the money already you can just like put the money that you would have paid into a bank and let it accumulate interest that is more than the interest of the hex debt and then pay the hex debt so like essentially <laughs> essentially you can like game the system and pay less even though you're using the hex loan thing oh. the hex debt thing I don't know that's what my parents said so I'm just like following that so lead. they put they took all the money so they they did the thing that was like we'll pay off mm-hmm. not doing hex mm-hmm. and then they saved that amount of money in an account yes which, which accrues interest, interest yeah. and then at the end does the, it's like it'll, do you have to pay be... in installments or is it after the degree is complete um, I'm pretty sure it's after the degree is right. complete I kind of just don't think about and it and by that time the interest in the account will have Surpassed. gone to a point where it's more than you would have had to yeah. pay with the hex debt yeah so interesting you get a small little discount that's like very clever yeah, I know my, my parents they're good with yeah. the money shit it's very smart yeah they both retired recently really yeah how old are they they're both in their sixties now. Oh, wow. it's like older than I remember, which makes sense. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Normally, they're like, I, f- I feel as if I have old parents, but then every now and again, people are like, "No, nah, man, my parents are like 70. <laughs> Whose parents are seventy? I, I, you know, like Fraser's parents are quite. Uh, Fraser's dad is. Fraser's dad is old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 They got a new cat recently. It's very nice. Wow. That's. Thank you for telling me. Yeah, man. <laughs> I'm very excited. About the time man. I saw Fraser's dad's dick no well kind of it was like (laughs) i think it was him i definitely saw his butt and i'm pretty sure i saw dingus as well but it was like um and i told fraser and he was like yeah it sounds like him so i was like out um at the beach in like that you know it's cold sandy bay beach that's like there's like a little playground and i don't know yeah in the yacht club or something yeah. yeah um so he was like out the front of like the yacht club and he'd just gotten back from, like, an, e- uh, an early morning, like, kayaking trip or something mm. on the Derwent. And uh, everybody's, like, getting out of the boat. And he just, like, straight up, he's like, I'm not going to the change room. Just takes off his clothes 
in the middle of the day, completely naked, like at on the beach, on the dock, like no. at the beach. <laughs> yeah, and starts getting yeah. changed in front of everybody. There weren't that many people there. There was like his yeah. rowing team or whatever, and then like me and uh, whoever I was with. And I was like, I think that's Fraser's dad. And then he starts <laughs> taking off his pants, and I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's how know. like that's how old you want to be. To yeah, where it's just like. Well, you just don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, you just don't give a fuck. Yeah. I think I might be peeking it a little Are bit. You? Well, every time you laugh, <laughs> it's, it's going <laughs> to... It peaks a little bit. Right. So I'm going to put the gain down it's just a, a smidge bit. more. A yep. Yeah. I love this microphone. Yeah, I was going to say nice. it's like an interesting... Because it's a USB. Woo. But then it's like... Um, I can like... Yeah, it's got all the different it's uh, got, shapes. It's got polar patterns on the back yeah. that I can change around. Yeah. Have you done a unit on audio stuff? Yeah, I did one recently that was actually quite good. Yeah. There was, because, uh, lecturers for any course, uh, hit and miss, but Truth. the, uh, the one for audio was a particularly good one. He did mm. the sound design for Rango. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, I'd like, he, he talked a lot mm. about Rango. Yeah. <laughs> Which is kind of funny. <laughs> like, I've seen Rango like once before, yeah. a long time ago. Yeah. Did you have to rewatch Rango? No, we rewatched scenes of it. But one of the most interesting things that we heard about it was like, he, oh yeah, and he would just like casually drop like, oh yeah, and, you know, when I was working with Hans Zimmer, like uh, he was doing yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, and, uh, he says Hans Zimmer and you're all like, oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> honestly. Yeah, and uh, I like, yeah. He he would like show you a scene, and then would play just like different departments that had done the sound design. Because it's like, as soon as a film gets past a certain level, it's like the jobs just like fracture out into all these individual mm-hmm. roles, and like <clears throat> there'll be department like a whole department of people just doing the sound effects and then like a whole department of people dealing with like dialogue and a whole Mm. department doing like all these different things and it's crazy that they managed to get it all to like work together but yeah Yeah. so he was just like playing the individual departments and then that's cool showing them all together yeah and like yeah it was really interesting your course sounds like a lot like it's got a lot more money than the course that i did yeah and mine cost, um, to do the bachelor's, it's a two-year degree Yep. Uh, for a bachelor's of film and television, and it's like 50 grand, right. 56,000 or something. I did the diploma uh, for 18,500, which was just half the bachelor, basically, right. one year. So one year, yeah. And uh, my audio unit was like, we watched like a scene from Toy Story, and then, um, I don't know, our teacher, she like, she knew all the stuff, she just didn't quite have she didn't have the words to explain it so i feel like so many people got lost in yeah. the audio unit and yeah. really fell behind they had no idea what was going on do you think you got uh, got out of it what she like did you understand the um concepts enough to sort of well, understand her we had two language? exams that were like written and then one practical exam where we right. got out our mics and stuff and recorded a scene do you do those exams happen like in one day like no, nah, this is over the thing. course of like. Oh, okay, right. Um, oh, do you mean like everybody does exams yeah. on a day or something? Nah, yeah. it wasn't like that. Nah, right. it was like I don't know. After like a month or like three months or something, we all come and do like what, the first exam. Mm. It just happens to be in that class or whatever. Right. Um, yeah, the exams were like they were like a memory test. Like and and afterwards, um, I don't know. I just remember like she was handing out people's marks and stuff. And then she got to me and she's like, you don't need to see yours. And I was like, why? And she goes, because, you know, you don't need to see, you know, you know, you did well. You don't need to see it. Got him. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> but I do want to see it. I'll take that. And I did do very well. And it was like, but it was a memory test. It was like, yeah, just, if you remember all the numbers and stuff, you don't yeah. really need to remember what they mean to get a good mark. Did you have like, like, yeah, you said you had like practical assignment as well. So we had one practical exam as well, which was, um, we got out a mixer um, we got out a mixer recorder and, uh, we basically like shot dialogue from a script. They actually, we got the camera out as well so that we could like sync and stuff and show that we know how to do synchronize and do all of that stuff. And yeah, it was, it was very basic stuff. 
which is like why I feel like it wasn't worth eighteen thousand dollars. Yeah. Because it was things that I'd already done. Yeah, I guess the problem with uni now, and especially like, I guess it, it's always going to be easy for people to make tutorials about things that you do on a computer. Mm -hmm. I think like the computer is a great way to learn how to do things on a computer. Things that get a bit more tricky are like cinematography and like on set things mm -hmm. where like the best way to learn that is by actually being on set, mm. but like using programs and software and that, like, I don't think you necessarily need to go to uni for that anymore, No, which is unfortunate. And, it, and it's also the thing like, well, I, I think there is something to be gained from being in a community of people that mm -hmm. are also wanting to do the same thing being surrounded that was the best most valuable yes. thing that I got from you it was yeah. just all the people who are also doing that stuff yeah mm. like and I think film degrees specifically are like real hit and miss mm. just cause it's I don't know people well schools tend not to really give a shit about the arts yeah, <laughs> yeah. or don't really know how to teach them very well yeah was well, it's always hard to teach art yes and to quantify how yeah. well somebody is yeah. or how good they are at art yes tammy do you think it depends on what what college you go to tammy says do you think it depends on what college you go to like um all the courses will be different i guess it's like yeah yeah I think it depends. Yeah. It's like, because uh, Swinburne, as much as, yeah, it's in, it's in fashionable to complain about it now since we're in the, like, last half and people, it's sort of like, as the cohort gets closer in friendship, it's like, the more there is a general feeling of, like, we aren't getting enough out of this. Yeah. Because like, everybody kind of agrees that there are certain things that could be so easily fixed. Mm. Are you explaining that to the colleges? Are you yeah. letting them know? Because I think that's the biggest part about it, is that too many people stay quiet about it, so nothing mm. happens yeah. Yeah. from it. I have um, a friend, like, I, I know that I would be inclined to not do anything about it, just because mm -hmm. of how I am, but I have a friend who is... Like he takes it to the next level. He he has it. His dad is a lawyer, and <laughs> and he like wrote a fucking manifesto <laughs> and like brought it to the teachers, and uh, like had people from the year above and like like people who are part of the student representative council and like they all went to a meeting and like he had like systems for them that he was like you should implement this. It was really? crazy, wow. but it did work. It didn't mm, work. Like, we crazy. got we got what we wanted. What did you want? Um, so, the course got extended from three years to four years. Um, but they put a limit on the amount of films that would get made. So, the, the point of the three-year course and the four-year course is that the first two years are spent learning how to make films and, and just mm -hmm. different random stuff about that. But then the last year is spent making a film. Mm -hmm. Uh like the grad film yeah and uh now it's the last two years i spent making that film wow which is kind of wild uh that's so, an extremely long time yes. to spend making one yes. short film so this first semester of this year like all i've done this year is do like i didn't write a script specifically but like i had friends that wrote scripts and then they have to like accumulate a crew of people within the course mm -hmm. and then pitch it to the teachers mm -hmm. and like even just that people took it so seriously because as soon as the course conveners at week six were like oh we're only going to green light 20 films and there's 43 that are being written really yeah they don't green light everybody's films yeah wow so that that was that was where the problem came up was that people felt like we weren't given enough films to make. Yeah. Even though the course had been extended. Mm -hmm. uh, so, 
That's a lot of films to make still. Even yes, 20. 20, 20 yeah. is a fuckload. We've got, I think, 80 people in the year group. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it is a lot of films. And they were also limiting people to two head of department roles. So that's, like, editor, cinematographer, director, sound design, I think is one. Yeah, and, like, production design and things like that. Yeah. So, people, you could only do... So you can only two, be, like, director and editor. Yes. Right. Of, you like, can't... two different films. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So... It's very... Can you direct, edit, and shoot, like, your own film? I don't think so. <laughs> you need to get other people so. in there? Yeah. yeah. It's like... It, it, and it's because, like, people need to be marked on their work. Like, they need to be marked on what they did in yeah. one of them. So. I hate that, like... I get it, but I also kind of always hated the... By the way, you're going to be marked on how well you work with other people. Mm. It's like, yeah, like, I don't know. Circumstances often lead to, like, things just going wrong when you're supposed to be, like, coordinating with other people. Yeah. At the end of this year, we had to do a peer assessment, which was one of the dumbest assignments (laughs) that I've had to do because it's like, we haven't even done anything yet. Mm -hmm. We've literally just, like, somebody's written a script, they've gotten the crew together, we pitched the film, and then you're like have to rank them out of 10 on like their productivity and like how well they worked with the team and it's mm-hmm. like we literally just like have sat down and talked about the film and like I don't know it, it, yeah. it, it, it seems dumb but so I just gave everybody 10s like everybody yeah. in the group was just like 10 out of 10 on everything oh, and cool. I was submitting it with like a few minutes to go before the submission and like I just had so much fun bullshitting the like explanation section where I was <laughs> like this production designer makes makes a, a mean mood board. <laughs> you should have seen it. Wow, that's yeah. funny. That's so, what, what's your uh, preferred like position on a film department, rather? Yeah. At the moment, because you're a big editor for a long time now. Yeah, I'm still planning on going into visual effects as a career. Mm-hmm. I'm. And I guess the problem there is that not everybody in the course uses visual effects or feels comfortable Mm -hmm. using them for their project. Um, So, at least, like, I've I've got three head of department roles now that have been greenlit, and two of them are cinematography and one of them is editor. Mm -hmm. And I might have to drop the editor one if Mm -hmm. they are going to limit me to two. But I would rather do the cinematography. That's probably the biggest one. Thanks. (laughs) Thanks. <laughs> um, yeah. So you'd rather do cinematography than edit in this situation? Uh, yeah. If it was yeah. a trade-off between I two. think, like, editing as a, like, narrative editing, for me, like, doesn't really scratch the itch mm-hmm. that I want to. Like, I love visual effects. And that kind of editing, because it's like, you take one shot and just like, fuck it up or something, <laughs> like do, do something crazy with it. But um, the act of like, putting them together in a way that is sort of like flows narratively and uh, like doing pacing in that, like, I'm not, I, uh, I don't sort of naturally lean towards that, but cinematography I can kind of get because it's like you visualize like what yeah. the shots are and it's yeah. like oh you can do this and that would mm-hmm. be interesting mm-hmm. but yeah as a cinematographer uh, what do you try to capture do you feel like you're putting your own kind of creative input in Are you? do you feel like you're almost your own kind of director on a film yeah I hope so like like there's, it depends on the director like I because like I'm not even that experienced at Hey. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not even that experienced yet doing cinematography. Mm-hmm. Like, I did cinematography for a film in the summer, and that was my my friend who's doing who like wrote the manifesto for the course. Like he, he's um, he's very particular with how he does things. So like, for have I, I met this guy? Who Jack. Is? Jack. Jack Wilson Lee. I don't know, I remember. Maybe. Yeah. I only went to that one party that one time. He was probably there. Mm. He has, like, long hair. But, mm. yeah. Um, see the guy who was vaping? 
No, no, that's from Felix. Oh yeah, Felix. At, at the at the party the other day, he set off the fire alarm because he was vaping. Really? Yeah. <laughs> that's great. Vaping, yeah. but at least I know it works now because we hadn't, yeah. <laughs> we hadn't tested. It. Yeah. And the one in the kitchen is like open, and I, I doubt that that one. <laughs> it's like <laughs> battery hanging, dangling yeah, from hanging the roof. Off the that's funny. Um, yeah, Jack, Jack made a film called mm. Benediction, and uh, I am doing the visual effects for that because he's he's like. He does a little bit of visual effects himself, so he's mm-hmm. open to using it, which is great. Cool. He, but he's like, he's getting me to do stuff that I've never done before, so I'm a bit scared. Oh yeah. I'm gonna, have to, I'm gonna fuck that up. But, like what? Um, there's a shot that starts fully CG. Oh. <laughs> like, what? Yeah, like, man, it, it's like a, a uh, it's like a caveman mm-hmm. painting a cave painting. Yeah. But it starts on fully CG cave wall fully CG cave painting and then pans across a few and pulls back and then there's a green screen element of the actor mm-hmm. in, behind a green screen uh, in front of a green screen so like I I've, I've got like that's gonna be fucking hard yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've got a little bit of experience with 3D like enough to where I'm like I I'll be able to get something it mm. might not look real yeah <laughs> yeah wow like uh, so that, that's probably the most challenging part, but the rest cool. of it, is, it should be just a bit of fun. Yeah. I made a, um, there's a scene where the Melbourne, like, gets bombed, and there's a big, like, nuclear explosion, mm-hmm. so I made a, like, a simulation of a nuclear explosion in Blender, yep. and, like, I'm hoping that looks good, because cool. that was a bit of fun making that. That sounds really cool. Um, but yeah, so, I was a cinematographer for that, and because he... Like, yeah, he's very particular, kind of knows what he's looking for. He essentially just, like, handed me a shot list mm-hmm. of what he wanted, and then I was like, oh, cool. I, I drew, like, a storyboard for it before mm-hmm. the project happened, so I kind of understood what he was looking for. But, yeah, that was very intense, because it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm not yeah. that experienced on the camera, and then all of a sudden it's like, we shot two films in a week, mm-hmm. and it was, like, probably the most I've worked in my whole life. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just just in that week period. Mm. Um, Two films in one week. Yeah. Wow. And they were they were good though. Like it, it was it was a good experience. Mm. Um, they haven't yet been finished because I have to do the visual effects <laughs> oh. <laughs> and before it can be locked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It's been good. That's a lot of work. Yeah. I'm jealous because we, our film course is nothing like that. The one that mm. I ended up doing. Yeah. Um, yeah, our one was like, we have such a small, like, retention of students as well, which is really bad. And people like, drop out? Yeah, people right. drop out, like me, like, heaps mm. of people drop out. Did you drop out before the end of the full year? No, I finished my diploma, and then they asked if I wanted to uh, continue so, with the bachelor, yeah. and as I decided not to, yeah. because it would have been another 40 grand. Yeah, you're still in contact with people in the course? Yeah, yeah, yeah heaps yeah. of people. Yeah. Um, and, like... I'm actually, they're allowed to bring in people from the outside to work on their grad projects. Yeah, nice. So I'm going to DP somebody's yeah, grad film. That's good. It's going to be really cool. Yeah. And have you used a RED yet? No. No. Next year, hopefully. All right. So Probably apparently I'm, I like, at the end of this year, I'm going to be shooting on a RED. And I, I've still never used a RED before. Yeah. They're like, yeah. Oh, it's all right. <laughs> we'll just bring you in for, it's like a 15 minute chat with us to make sure you yeah. know what you're doing. I'm like, okay. yeah, I know what I'm doing. Sure. No worries. <laughs> Just press the button. Yeah, all you press, press, press record, right? Yeah. <laughs> so much. I was literally like, Sam came home the other day and I was looking at a JPEG of a red on like Google mm-hmm. Images. Uh, and he was like, what are you doing, man? I'm, like, I'm trying to learn how to use this camera from looking at a picture. Of it. I was looking it's at like, the... where's the buttons? Um, it's the Red Raven something, something, something. Yeah. And I was just looking at like... The Red Dragon. I was literally like looking at the buttons, yeah, trying to figure yeah. out uh, something. Wow. But this is all, it's all like an interface. It's not yeah. like buttons on the outside. Like you need to, well, that's the, it's got its own little OS that you need to learn. Yeah. I um, love, um, like honestly the sets, cause we, uh, when we went to school together, we were making films together. Yes. And, uh, this, like, I have like since making films that are more organized, <laughs> like the set that I've gone to are way more like 
I think when people have specific roles and everything's kind of very planned out by like producers and mm-hmm. uh, first ads and things, like sets are so much more fun. Yeah, when, when it's like planned yeah. out, which is crazy because I mean, like I'm terrible at planning. Yeah. So I just kind of like I'll do I'll I'll shoot this film uh-huh. and then rock up and like I don't know I love producers now. Just because it's like I would never do that. <laughs> Hell yeah! Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah that's so they're funny. just out there planning everything. Yeah, um, but yeah, because I remember the sets that we would do Called in high school. Sets, yeah, yeah. like uh, move the desk over there, <laughs> and that's our set. <laughs> it's like, yeah. They're like in the middle of a class with yeah. real students, just like they're not actors. <laughs> so like we just went into a class and started yeah. shooting. Like the just because everybody's job is so like fluid and nobody mm-hmm. really knows what they're doing yeah <laughs> so it's just like yeah it's so, it's such a shambles yeah. and uh and it's way more stressful when, when it's like that. yeah <laughs> but it's yeah i mean they're hilarious to look at now yeah when we were shooting you mean like our our final films in like year 12 that yeah kind of no, well uh, even those but like yeah i guess those as well because like we we didn't really we didn't have producers or people that were like we, timekeeping. Yeah, if you were the director, you were also the assistant director and the producer yeah, and like yeah. cinematographer. Yeah. And editor. You yeah. had to do all of yeah. that yourself. Which is fucked. Which is insane. Yeah. Because yeah. like now, I've done a lot of jobs, not jobs, for like helping people out uh, where I'll be the first AC, like doing the focus pulling. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's, it's satisfying because it's like it's such a specific job and that's all you have to think about all day is just yeah. like is that shit in focus yes job done like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. yeah so it's great i enjoy that role because mm-hmm. it's like just the right amount of responsibility <laughs> yeah. yeah i've now first ac'd uh like one just one like little short film that was like not involved with school or anything it's just like the cafe i work at mm. they're like hey uh we all feel like we need to make a film. So uh, we've got this script. We're just going to shoot something for Tropfest just because. And um, they're like, do you have any experience as a focus puller? I'm like, tons of experience. <laughs> I've done it so many times. And uh, they're like, cool, come along. And I mean, we're shooting on a C100. And yeah, it's like, right. I know what I'm doing. This is like, yeah. I've used this camera before. It's just easy. Yeah. Yeah. But even like, dude, my thing, I'm like embarrassed by the fact that I'm still really shit at getting focus. I feel like by now I should be good at being able to like instantly find focus on something. Right. I still suck at it. Yeah. I think it it takes like a very long long. time. Yeah. Yeah. Way longer than I thought. Yeah. I like, I I don't do, I'm not like exact with it. (laughs) When I'm getting focus on things, it's literally just like focus past them and then past them again. Yeah. I kind of just go down. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) That's what I do. Yeah. Yeah. When then you like, you watch like, um, I don't know. B roll of like a film, like a triple yeah. A film or something, they're like instantly <laughs> rack to the uh the, the clapper. Yes. And then like they mark it and then instantly back to where they were. Yeah. And it's like yeah. it's I don't know. I know. That's like your remote control. Yeah. The, I've seen like behind the scenes of Game of Thrones where there's a dude just like with his own monitor with a wireless focus puller just like yeah. <laughs> like yeah. and uh, yeah. and the like um I recently bought a distance measure like a laser distance measure oh, cool. so you can just like laser point at somebody's mm. chest and then like one and a half meters and like oh, that's go to that really and cool. mark it down. that's a really good idea yeah so yeah. that that i haven't used it yet but that should come in here that's a really good idea yeah. i've been like yeah it should be about three feet or yeah whatever and yeah. Yeah, but then you go back and back and back yeah. <laughs> um yeah i i used to think that the focus puller had to be on the lens like mm. on every film like forever like I thought that was just how it worked and so like I remember looking at um, an interview with Alejandro Gonzalez Inaritu, director of The Revenant and they're talking about shooting people on horseback and he's like how the hell do you shoot somebody on a horse like how the <laughs> fuck do I get this in, in focus and he's like talking about the focus puller how it was really hard for the focus puller and I was like yeah yeah did they build a rig where they've got like someone like on the back of a truck with the camera and then some other dudes there like doing <laughs> yeah. this with the fucking lens trying to get it in focus. No, he was sitting in like the tent like, yeah. I don't know, 50 meters away with his like wireless thing. Mm. And then I worked on The Nightingale 
um, as an extra and like I got to see people doing that like they had a steady cam operator who was like this really cool like um, sort of a one up but then they were like it was really shitty to witness like time constraints happening and like breaking down the creativity on a film of that sort yeah. of level because they were like shoot they had this one up where they the camera like sweeps through this like dinner scene and it follows like this one guy and then it sort of stops and follows this other guy over to like this like table conversation and doesn't cut the whole time mm-hmm. like a one shot and it's really really cool and they did a couple takes and uh, the director is like, yeah, it's looking like a different film. Like, because the Steadicam operator wasn't the cinematographer. Right. And, uh, yeah, so they had to bring somebody in who knew how to use the Steadicam. And they shoot the shot, and they're like, it just feels like the wrong kind of thing. And then the AD was like, yeah, we need to move on. And they're like, well, then let's just, like, do a cup, Let's do a setup over here and a setup over here. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, that's really sad. Because, yeah. like, that would have been really cool. Yeah. Yeah. It does suck. It's kind of like... I mean, I look at, uh, or I'm starting to look at films in a completely different way. I, I, I don't watch anywhere near as much films as I should. Yeah, me too. Um, just because it's like the amount of inspiration that I think you can get from watching films. And like the, I think, say, if I want to get better at cinematography, then being on set and doing the cinematography is probably like is Mm. one of the number one things I could do to learn but then also like the second one probably just like watching films watching films yeah 100% and like it's always like incredible to see like storytelling done through film that you just you know you like wouldn't have thought of that (laughs) yeah yeah storytelling as yeah. in like visual storytelling yeah where mm. it's just like you, yeah there's a certain like use of the camera where you're like I completely understand what they're trying to say with that but I know that like mm. I wouldn't have thought of right, that right right <laughs> like, I see that and it just inspires me yes yeah. I'm like that is so cool yeah. I want to come up with shit like that that's always like what I'm looking for mm. in art that I view these days is like almost a sense of awe just because it's like not only did somebody think of that but then they fucking did it like yeah right, right. and now i'm considering it like, yeah that's so cool it had to be who do you think is like one of the most technical from a technical standpoint like inspiring or creative directors an exciting director see this is the thing where i don't watch enough films and then even yeah. if i do i'm like I don't, who, who made that? I don't know. <laughs> right, really? Oh, yeah. you don't, like, remember? You don't no. have, like... I have, like, this encyclopedic head of, like, films yeah. and actors and directors now. I guess, like, one of the things... And it's, like, cliche, because everybody... Like, the first year that we did the film course, one of, uh, one of the teachers is kind of like, oh, what's your favourite director? Or, like, what, what did you watch recently that you really liked? And, like... um Fuck, I can't even remember his name now. Hot Fuzz, Shaun of the Dead. Edgar Wright. Edgar Wright. Man, film students fucking froth Edgar yeah, Wright. Yeah. yeah. It's like, it's a it's a film student cliche. Yeah. But then, like, you watch his films and you're just like, oh, well, that's shit. some creative yeah. filmmaking. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. <laughs> it's for sure. And that we had that inspiration in our earliest sort of film. <laughs> Paranoia is Edgar yeah. Wright on yeah. camera. That is us. We watched Hot Fuzz. We watched Shaun of the Dead. And we're like, we, we do that now. <laughs> yeah. And, like, we tried to. Yeah. And we got some of that. We I got love, some of the editing. Yeah. And stuff. I love it. the balls of that like claim with absolutely like the with absolutely no experience, just being like let's let's just do that. Yeah, and then you go out there and you're like, well, we close did enough. It. Yeah, it was <laughs> it was close enough for the certainly close enough for our yeah. first film. Yeah, I still look back and like I watch that and then I watch the other stuff that's like people's first films mm. at Drew and I. Yeah, <laughs> you know, Mr. Gavlik yeah. still says that we were the most inspired like creative group. You, me, uh, Jack, Gabriel. Josh, and, like, Sam and stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah, he's, like, still having had another group like you guys Damn. came through. Yeah. Fuck yeah. He's, he's still showing people paranoia <laughs> and change. He's still showing change. them that. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> yeah. So, why you... That was, like, the beginning, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. Of our filmmaking sort of ventures. And so, why did you first get into film? Honestly, the... Uh, I don't know. I think about this a lot myself because I'm yeah. just like, 
what, what the fuck am I doing? Like, yeah. <laughs> how did, how did this happen? Um, uh, and it was literally like primary school. Uh, there was a film competition. We shot a film about some dogs, I guess. I, I, it was like a dog shelter a documentary. Mm-hmm. And I just, uh, as soon as we sort of talked about that, I went home and recorded with my parents like digital camera like I had a shitty digital camera Mm -hmm. and uh I just like recorded my first vlog which is still on my YouTube channel welcome to Saint Club it's the most like cringy shit I like it's funny it's so funny I mean it's you gotta be proud of it it's very endearing these days but also like exposing like (laughs) if, if friends watch it I'm just like oh you can't be you can't be embarrassed by no. it anymore. You have to just own it. It's so good. It's, it's too like good. it's it. If I show somebody that, then like that's really me like putting trust in them. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. So but they don't show everybody. Yeah. I know I, you showed happened. someone, and then they started showing everyone. So you privated the I video. Did. It's back up now. Ah, oh, thank God. But it it was private for like a year. Yeah, that's um, really funny. Yeah. So it was yeah it was that and the like I've never been huge on storytelling like I'm getting there now I'm starting to understand like that no matter how technically experienced you are like it's gonna mean shit all if you can't like do something with that you can make a really good looking crap film yeah and you can and you can it's even like there's a certain beauty in how people use the software and like the cool like sort of jigsaw pieces that they're doing with like effects and mm-hmm. like techniques and stuff that you can make something that doesn't look impressive yeah. but it's like beautifully made in mm. the software itself mm. like and uh, l- like people can make beautiful code for a program that nobody needs and like I think it's kind of a similar thing so like I was always interested in the software really and like manipulation of, of footage and it like I yeah I've never really naturally been very good at storytelling or, or have an affinity towards that but I think I'm trying to compensate for that now yeah. <laughs> do you reckon um corridor digital basically had a massive influence yeah, on I, it? Cause like, I, I see you and like you even look a little bit like <laughs> some of those guys like a cross yeah. between two of the guys in my I head mean, right now yeah I've been subscribed to corridor digital probably longer than any other channel yeah. on youtube and yeah have you seen their recent um Reaction reactions series, to yeah. bad cgi and they recently had andrew kramer on who is also another huge like yeah. influence because he he makes like hands down the best tutorials and releases like super useful plugins for after effects for mm-hmm. free mm. so he's a beast and i yeah. had never heard of him until i watched yeah. that video but i obviously heard of video copilot yes and like yeah. um action I'd, essentials but like i'd seen those yeah. like videos before i remember like that was that was the start of my visual effects shit is like mm. torrenting action essentials one yeah it's like and making text appear out of smoke <sighs> that yeah. kind of yeah, thing yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like i remember um like i laugh at this memory now because like i was only just getting into After Effects and Taylor Moore mm. was already... Shout out Taylor Shout Moore. Out <laughs> Taylor Moore. I got a funny picture. What was <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, he, uh, he was like next to me in the computer lab and I was trying to track something in the footage and I knew that Taylor was like good at After Effects. Uh, so I was like, oi, oi, Taylor, like, how do you track this? And he was so patronizing about it. Really? Like, well, see, like, I, I'm, I'm pretty good at, like, I feel like if there's smart people around me, I'm good at just, like, extracting things from them without mm-hmm. taking too much offense if they're like, you fucking dumb cunt, like, let me do this for you. And then they're just like, but the... He, he was yeah, he was basically like oh my god it's just so easy and then like did it and I'm like bitch you can't do that like what I can do anymore so oh, that's, that's so funny, funny. <laughs> Taylor Moore is such an interesting character oh yeah he's like because he started out with like massive potential in like actually in like visual oh, yeah. arts like yeah. in like he was Photoshop good at, like, and, and After yeah. Effects he was really good 
Here's the, and then, here's the first, but like I'm the first thing that I made in Blender and in After Effects apparently is like, like because I was like, oh Taylor Moore did something cool, like oh. Mm. So you actually funny. owe it all yeah, to I Taylor. Do, I do. <laughs> <laughs> do you keep in contact with him? Yeah, occasionally. I mean, we have a Snapchat group with me and a few other right, right. fellows from yeah. Tassie. Yeah. Uh, I I stopped playing video games, so I don't really. Go you don't play games Discord. anymore. Like I I play them occasionally, it, yeah. and it's sad. It's sad because like I want to keep in touch with those guys, and I do go on the Discord occasionally, but it's like mainly because I stopped playing games I stopped talking to them which mm. is sad but yeah. I need to keep doing that yeah so let me try and think of where there, there was something else I wanted to get into okay when did you decide that you actually wanted to like pursue film as a career probably like year either year 11 or year 12 because mm. like up until that point film had just been kind of this thing of like this is what I do I guess like I'm, I'm just it's like a hobby that I happen to be like interested in and then uh, I had always had the assumption that like engineering is what everybody does because both of my parents are engineers so That's like right. I think I remember you in like year 10 so yeah now I'm gonna be an engineer yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. it was like definitely something with science that I was like mm. you know that's what fucking everybody <laughs> they yeah. go into science they go into engineering my brother had the same thing where like he was originally he did like math specialized and mm. uh and I was like down that trajectory and then my parents were like you do know you you don't have to do math <laughs> specialized yeah. like you uh, you don't have to like that course won't really come in handy for you if if you are gonna go into film it, yeah, it was it was year eleven and year twelve where I was kind of like, oh fuck, like I, I can do whatever I want with my life, like I mm. I can at least in a career sense or like what I want to study. So and then I did like the sort of uh, doubled down on like artsy courses, like I did that's, graphic design and that's media production. That's really really good that your parents told you you could do whatever you want. Yeah, that's really yeah, really it good. is good. Not everybody's parents did that. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. I don't think so. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering who, like, who in the film course has had to have that conversation with their parents where they're like, I want to do this film degree. Yeah. And they're like, you fucking watched? Have like, you ever had someone tell you that you couldn't do film? I mean, Mr. Roebuck. <laughs> Mr. Roebuck? There was, James. There, there was James, a, what did you do? There was a day in class. He must have been having a bad day or something. Because <laughs> it was like a home group session. Teacher shouldn't say something. Yeah, like no. Alright, go on. It was a home group session, and like, we, uh. <laughs> he was basically asking people what they wanted to do with their life, and then we went around the circle, and like, Harry Goodwin, who I think is gonna do a piloting, do like an air, airplane, air, he aviation doing degree. Because he, 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 like, Flipped back and forth because he, he was one of those people where like his eyesight was in, was getting in the way. Yeah, I thought his eyesight wasn't yeah, good enough. It like it, it went from my eyesight's not good enough, my eyesight is good enough, my eyesight isn't is yeah. like, and I think he's finally like sorted it out and yeah. he's going to do aviation. And he told Roebuck that he was going to go into like aviation and specifically the Air Force, I think. Mm -hmm. But uh, and and he asked me and I was like, oh yeah, film, I guess, uh, <laughs> or film. Uh, yeah, I, I said, like, I, I guess film, but, like, science, if that doesn't work out, it's kind of just like, yeah, I'd suggest going to science. Like, like I don't know, he was, he was very dismissing of yeah. the film as, as an idea, and at that time I was kind of on the fence about it anyway. And, like, he got to Angus yeah. Gath? Angus Gath. Yeah, yeah. yeah Gath yeah. Gath. Yeah, something, yeah. And Angus was kind of like, oh, yeah, like, plumbing. And then he's like, yeah, see, some people, you know, they, they want to do jobs that, like, aren't as... Uh, like it was basically simultaneously being patronizing to Angus and diminishing our dreams of doing like yeah. what we wanted because he yeah. was kind of like you know so sometimes plumbing's a really shit job yeah, but like, we need plumbers yeah yeah so yeah like, thank you Angus. like some people just don't want to do like the important jobs or something, something along those lines mm. like but but you you should he was essentially just saying like aim low and you'll wow. never fail wow <laughs> it, was, it was so like, I wanted to be concert master for the TSO <laughs> I ended yeah. up being a teacher. You, have you seen that like 
uh, DOE student Instagram page. DOE student memes? Yeah. Dude, it's fucking masterpiece. It's crazy. It's so, so insane. Yeah. There's and one like, of... Th- it's weird. Like, my videos <laughs> of me doing, like, dumb shit. Yeah. And then him, like, memeing it. He <laughs> finds, like, like, what is going ancient on? stuff. I haven't seen anything yeah. of you. He went through my entire, like category like catalog of videos looking mm. for things related to Taruna. Who is he? I don't know. We don't know who he is. That's amazing. He's got a lot of stuff about Roebuck on there. Yeah. There, there's Duarte as well. There's a lot of stuff <laughs> yeah. about Duarte, which is very funny. Um there was an original like meme page and then it was it was like public and then uh, apparently like students showed the teachers so yeah. like they had to close it down for whatever reason because right. I've now the new one is private yeah. I think you have to like I can I can imagine him getting in a lot of trouble because yeah. like oh, Bailey you know how Bailey recorded the it was like a video of um, Patrick Eisel trying to do a front flip and like falling on his face <laughs> and he got suspended for it Bailey got suspended yeah. for it and uh, and oh, so yeah, and he had to like delete the video in front of the principal Mm -hmm. the principal was very adamant about that but then uh he had like infrared like sent it to everybody like bluetooth but like shitty nokia phone bluetooth (laughs) everybody had videos yeah everybody had videos of it and like it's still on youtube Uh, really yeah when can i find it and uh taylor uploaded to his instagram to his uh, snapchat story like a video of that (laughs) and like uh tag like noah and um adam i think yeah and yeah that's just good that's like an example of somebody like even one video making fun of somebody Mm -hmm. can get you suspended he's got like a catalog of instagram stories just being like Fuck exactly. these teachers, or like, here's some people fighting and yeah. like Minecraft sounds over the it's top. It's so of- fucking funny, though. Mm. It's so funny, and it's just, it's the, the, the thing with it is that it's like pointing out legitimate, like, problems yes. and issues yeah. with the school, and like, yeah. Uh, so strange. I still have a video, I think, on YouTube. Oh no, it's on YouTube. You, you have the video, it's on your account. It's um, the full video of West Side Story, yes. which was illegally videoed, yes, yes. by the way. Yeah. Um, which has uh, that one part where Jacob Vidal clotheslines Luke Wiggins and his glasses go flying into the audience. Like I didn't realize that. It's like the fight scene that happens. They'll charge at each other. And they're supposed to fake fight. And Jacob accidentally punched Luke in the face. I think I do remember this. And now, Luke actually. falls over. Yeah. And his glasses, you can kind of see them just go flying off. And it's like, ooh, jeez. Jacob also like permanently damaged my wrist as well in, in that, that show. show. He's a yeah, he's a he's a physical guy. <laughs> but, yeah. <sighs> Anyways, film is cool. And what do you think you're going to do with it? So visual effects is what yeah. you want to end up being. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm hoping to get like a game plan or something. Yeah. I'm hoping to get an internship over the summer. Where at? Um, there was this, there was this internship program that, uh, is kind of like, I'm still not sure whether it's worth the money, but you, you essentially pay, uh, people to like find an internship internationally. And Mm -hmm. I would do it as part of like the degree, go overseas, do an internship. So it's in New York. It's a, yeah, like an internship at a small VFX house got an interview for it on Wednesday. Wow. And then hopefully... Is the interview like a interview. Skype interview yeah, kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. Uh, is it actually Skype as well? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. People still use Skype. <laughs> that's so strange. Yeah, it is. Uh, that's funny. But, yeah. So that that's that's the game plan for now. Get an internship uh, there. Mm-hmm. Do that over the summer. And then, hopefully, by then I will have decided what I want to do in terms of visual effects because I, I, I thought I was set with this visual effects idea. I was like, everybody's confused about what they want to do. Like, I'm fine. I just oh, got, like, visual like, what is visual effects? Yeah, and like, then, what and aspect? Then there's so many jobs inside yeah. that of just like, oh, do you want to do texturing or compositing or simulation or lighting or yeah. rigging or animation or like environment map painting and like... <laughs> there's, there's, do you have any idea of what you want to do? I, I would really like to go into something related to 3D. Uh-huh. Um, Modeling or... Um, yeah, like I think... Animation. Like texturing probably at the moment yeah. is like... Even though that's technically like 2D, it's still... Uh, it's like 
Yeah. MS Paint in 3D. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there's a, uh, I, I think that would be interesting, at least. Yeah. There's, like... Okay. Um, yeah, you can, there's a lot of jobs. You can use that kind of stuff to, like... In, in like video games as well yeah you can kind of not seamlessly at all but you can transition into like video game positions yeah. I think there's a, like there's a specific program called Substance Designer mm. which Adobe actually bought recently the, the Substance Designer and Substance Painter were made by a company called Algorithm and they got bought <laughs> by Adobe mm. um, so I'm not sure what's going to happen to that software but it's really good it's like essentially like you can design textures using nodes and and what that means is that like everything is procedural like you, you have a final like output node for, for all the different textures and you can just like generate random textures using that same pattern right so it's it's, it's crazy and i mean that software looks really interesting because i think it kind of like fits in with what i already know that is kind of related to 3d and mm -hmm. is related to like the the shading and materials which I'm interested in but mm. like the the problem with say I, I would once I come back from New York if I get this internship uh, there's an internship with a Melbourne based visual effects house we have a VFX house we do we've, we've <laughs> actually got some of the biggest VFX houses in the world like mm. some of the most like I had actually heard that yeah, before it's crazy Somebody it's because the government subsidizes it for some reason right. <laughs> like I, I don't know right. they're typically pretty bad at yeah that. but we, we've got a lot of VFX houses <laughs> and like some quite big ones uh, the specific ones that are doing internships are Method Studios and Luma right. or Luma Pictures or something um, and they like hey there you go. The uh, yeah. y you have to be super specific with your application for one of those internships. Like, if if you want a position there, you got to be like, I'm gonna do the modeling, and right. here is all my modeling. And uh, like, I didn't do anything else other than the modeling. <laughs> like, right. And yeah. so you have really have to decide ahead of time what you want to do, and yeah. I don't know yet. So yeah. hopefully that'll be sorted out. Well, I wish you luck. I have one final question for you uh -huh. as we come to the close. Uh, have you seen any of the John Wick movies? Yeah, I've seen the first two. You've seen the first I two? Have. All right. Uh, do you want to go and see if there's a showing of John Wick three at the cinema down the road? Yeah, sure. Fuck yeah! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for being on the podcast, Leo. No uh, I Thank appreciate it. Me. Thanks for talking about film. That was a, that was a, that's like a nice short one, one hour. Some of them, with the longest we've had was three hours. Wow. Um, That's good, we started and finished an entire bottle of rum <laughs> and then immediately we finished a three hour podcast and then Sam came home and then we recorded another one hour of talking about paramedic mm. stuff. I, think it was oh, I, I actually listened yeah. to the first hour and a half was it? Yeah. Was yeah. 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 Um, some of them are good. Oh, that wasn't our guy, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Some of them are a bit messy right now. I'd like to <laughs> structure them a little better. Yeah. yeah. Get an intro. Just be My intro is me saying hi. I'm Phoenix. Yeah, Welcome to the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. No, I don't need that. <laughs> no, every you do. time I. Because that hooks people in. No, yeah. but what hooks all of those fucking podcast stings? They're always like <laughs> Kevin McLeod, like free rides. <laughs> fucking ten seconds of a shitty you just Kevin McLeod. You just need to song. download every Kevin. No offense to Kevin McLeod. And, and then overlay them on top of each other. So and it's like, have that <laughs> <a show. laughs> welcome to the Phoenix Rainbow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Yeah. All right. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.